And as we get started, I'd like to wish you all a happy International Project Management Day and welcome you to today's webinar titled The Future Belongs to Project Manager 2.0. Today's session is being presented by Ms. Lisa Hodges, owner and principal consultant at Cornerstone Service Management. Lisa is a PRINCE2 practitioner, PMP, ITIL expert, and certified process design engineer. She is uniquely qualified with over 20 years of practical experience in project and service management. Lisa's subject matter expertise has been featured in articles published by PM World Journal and Media Planet, and her webinars and videos are attended by audiences worldwide. She gives back to the industry and is actively involved in professional organizations, including Project Management Institute, HDI, and ITSMF USA, where she is a regular speaker at local and national events and holds numerous leadership roles. We are so excited to have her join us today to speak about Project Manager 2.0, and we hope you will all enjoy the session. Lisa, you now have the floor. Thank you for that kind introduction, Kelly. I appreciate it. Let's just get some of the housekeeping out of the way, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to have a rapid fire progression through lots of ideas that aren't owned by me, but by these um, incredible companies that I'm referencing right here. Let's get started. So it, it should be, it's no surprise to any of you uh, whether you're an experienced project manager or just new to the industry, that the, the change cycle has gotten incredibly short. Um, it's a fast-paced environment that we work in. Cycle times are not going to get any shorter, ladies and gentlemen. And, and to make things more challenging, technology is involved in everything that we do today. Every business decision drives some type of technology change. It's not the good old days anymore. And we have to ask ourselves a question. Are we prepared for the future? Now, I recently attended, and, and actually I was speaking at a conference, a project management conference here in the United States. And what triggered this thought process that I'm gonna share with you today um, was a presentation by one, one of, of my peers, um, Dr. Harold Kersner, where he was talking about his book that he published, Project Management 2.0 and the new world of project management. And it got me to thinking, the project management discipline is changing, but are we as project managers prepared? Who is project manager 2.0? What skill sets do we need in order to carry our profession and our projects and our goals into the future? So Project Manager 2.0 looks different than Project Manager 1.0. Now, let's just pause for a moment. Throughout this presentation, I'm going to be throwing a lot of information at you. Project Manager 2.0 needs a bigger toolkit. And I will be sharing with you ideas that come from real world experience. I'll be referencing books and referencing frameworks and throwing a lot of information at you that you can do more uh, research on and a deeper dive on your own. Don't be overwhelmed by the amount of information that I'm gonna throw out there to you. You guys are project managers. You know what to do. Organize it, make a plan. Project Manager 2.0 needs a bigger toolbox. Um, guess what? You're going to need more knowledge, more tools, more te techniques, more frameworks, methods, and even some standards in order to flesh out that bigger toolkit. Now, I'm a PMP. I love the PMBOK. So those of you who are PMPs out there, don't turn me off because on this slide, I also have Prince 2. I'm going to say it out loud. Let's just deal with it. The PMBOK is a beautiful thing, but it's not enough. It's an incredible body of knowledge. It's like the encyclopedia of all things project management. Prince 2 is not a replacement for the PMBOK. It's rather a complement to the PMBOK. This beautiful thing that is this body of knowledge needs an actionable, practical plan, a method that is Prince 2 to bring that body of knowledge to life. What I'll share with you over the next hour or so is a real world experience from organizations that I worked with, I'm working with now, who are struggling with the challenges that your organizations are facing and have met those challenges. 
So this is going to be real live practical experience. Now, um, PMBOK is a body of knowledge. This is your encyclopedia of all things project management. PRINCE2 is the method to make that body of knowledge actionable. ISO 21500 is, a re is the new kid on the block. ISO 21500 is the standard of project management. In other words, it tells you what is the minimum, what is what must I do, what system of project management do I need to create in order to ensure quality deliverables from my project. And what I'm going to tell you today is that we need all three of these. Here in the US, if you ask about project management, the answer is the PMBOK. Outside the US, if you ask about project management, PRINCE2 is far more widely known. Use ISO 21500 to help bring the method and the body of knowledge together and make you a globally fluent project manager. As a project manager, uh, particularly if you're at all familiar with the PMBOK, you know this. We need occasional reference. That's the PMBOK. The PMBOK, however, requires a method to take all of that knowledge and put it to work. ISO 21500 says, you know, when there's a tie, when, when we need a tiebreaker to say, should we or should we not do something, use ISO 21500 to help determine what is that minimum that will create a quality system. Each one of these has a different focus. Together provides a complete, robust, actionable approach to project management. All of these method, body of knowledge, and standard work beautifully together. However, you know this as a project manager, there is no silver bullet. We cannot isolate ourselves in, um, in the PMBOK. We cannot isolate ourselves in the standard. We, have, we recognize that there are pros and cons to each one of these sources of knowledge. And where one is missing information, the other will fill that gap. ISO, for example, ISO 21500, does a great job of defining for the different project management processes. What are the inputs that this process needs? And what are the outputs that this process will deliver to another project management process? But doesn't talk about project management tools and techniques at all. That gap is filled through the PMBOK. Business case and business benefits are a huge driver. You know what? Hardly discussed at all in the PMBOK, other than the business case being an input to the project. Whereas with PRINCE2, the business case is the heart of the project. And the project manager is accountable for ensuring that his or her project achieves the business benefits that are expected and further is expected to create a benefits realization plan as an output for the project. Soft skills are a necessary skill set for any project manager. You know what? Prince2 assumes that slim down method assumes that of course you're aware as a project manager that you need soft skills. And so it's not explicitly discussed in PRINCE2. This is where the PMBOK does a fantastic job of describing to the project manager, what is the difference between being a leader and a manager? What are the different motivational theories out there that I should consider for my team? What do I do when there's conflict on a project? So the PMBOK becomes the reference to the PRINCE2 method. Now, here's another example in procurement. Um, PRINCE2, it doesn't do a deep dive into how to deal with suppliers and vendors and when procurement um, is necessary. The PMBOK does a beautiful job and provides extensive guidance on how to handle uh, procurement activities on a project. Quality management is necessary for any project. The PMBOK does a fantastic job of explaining why quality management is crucial to the project. PRINCE2 provides an actionable step-by-step -step approach for achieving that desired level of quality. ISO describes what the overall structure should be, should look like in any organization 
to ensure that we are successful and build quality in. Now, that's a lot. For those of you who are PMPs, I'm asking you to go out and be knowledgeable about PRINCE2 by managing projects uh, with PRINCE2. Go out and download ISO 21500. Learn how to use those tools together and adapt them for your projects. But guess what? That's not enough. Project Manager 2.0's toolbox has to go beyond project management disciplines and look at a variety of bodies of knowledge, methods, and standards, even outside of project management, particularly in these two domains. There's not a project out there, there's not a business decision out there that doesn't in some way, shape, or form involve technology. The disciplines of IT service management should be of interest to and should be an aid to project managers out there in overcoming challenges in your projects and your organization. Consider ITIL, the Information Technology Infrastructure Library, a set of best practices in managing services from end to end. Enterprise service management can't exist, exist successfully without project management. Project managers need to understand where project management fits in the overall service life cycle, taking a holistic approach. Project Manager 2.0 cannot afford to live on the PMO, the Project Management Office Island, in isolation of the SMO, the Service Management Organization. We have to bridge that gap. Organizations should consider COBIT in order to ensure that we've properly integrated IT service management, project management, and we have a governance structure in place that will ensure results moving forward. Whether you're involved in technology or not directly, security, IT service management security in particular, information security, and continuity are huge considerations that every organization has to face. Never are you more vulnerable in your organization than when you are making changes. That's what project management is all about changing the way that we're doing things, taking somebody's great idea and bringing it to life. Therefore, Project Manager 2.0 must understand how what they do in their projects has an impact on the overall organization's security, protecting confidentiality, integrity, and service and product availability. And now more than ever, be integrated from a continuity perspective. Gone are the days from 20 years ago when we would deploy a new service or a new product of our project, and then later as an afterthought, we would figure out how to integrate with our continuity plan. We can no longer afford to do that. And we've had numerous big ticket and very visible kinds of events that have brought that to life. Any framework, whether it's service management or project management, method or standard, it represents challenges to overcome for an organization to be asked to learn new things and change the way they do their work. But there are benefits to be achieved as well. You as project manager 2.0, your job is to help the organization understand what those benefits are to overcome those challenges and to create a blended approach because we all know that one method, one body of knowledge is not enough. Project Manager 2.0 is accountable. Now, this might be a very uncomfortable perspective to the traditional, let's say Project Manager 1.0 because Project Manager 1.0 in the past, Project Manager 1.0 was, was all about the triple constraints, right? I'm going to deliver on time, on schedule, on budget, with the appropriate level of, of scope and quality. Is quality an afterthought, though? Is it the triple constraints, scope, cost, and time? Or are we really more worried about two out of three of those? Cost, on budget, time, on schedule. Too many times in the past, Project Manager 
has finished the project, said I'm done, walked away without a sense of accountability about what they've created, the operational staff that have to maintain it, and users that have to use it in the organization that needs to benefit from it. We live in a social climate today where accountability is upfront and personal, and we cannot hide behind the triple constraints any longer. Consider if you need some assistance with methods of accountability, understanding what customers value, understanding what the organization needs, investigating techniques like value stream mapping, uh, how to develop business cases and benefits realization plans that are detailed in PRINCE2, um, value stream mapping and portfolio management that are built into and part of frameworks like IDLE and COBIT and other service management disciplines. We as project managers, Project Manager 1.0 needs to shift. Project Manager 2.0 is accountable for what happens in the project and after the project. We need to shift from a focus purely on what does done look like to a focus of what does good look like. Project Manager 2.0 bridges the gap. Now, there are a lot of gaps to bridge, right? There's the strategic to tactical gap. Um, in other words, the organization has needs. A project manager is tapped on the shoulder and commissioned to meet those needs, sometimes without really understanding what those needs are. There are disciplines out there, again, going back to IDLE and portfolio management and PRINCE2 with the business case, business relationship management, which will help the project manager make more intelligent choices to make sure that what we're doing at a tactical level inside the project is really meeting the strategic goals of the organization. The project and project manager are accountable for bridging the operational gap. When we're done with the project, the product of the project, the deliverables of the project live on. And um, methods and disciplines out there like IDLE, like DevOps, bring the operational staff into the project to help understand what's acceptable, what's usable, what's maintainable, what will work in an operational environment. Now, there's a functional team gap, right? This quote here uh, from Agile Principles, business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. You know what? Even if you're not working on a software development project, this principle holds true. In the past, Project Manager 1.0, there's been a big gap, a big separation between the requesting organization or the business and the performing organization. There's been a technology gap. Now, according to the 2015 State of DevOps report, if you want to succeed in the future, then we need to be high performers. And no organization exists out there without technology to underpin your business and the success of the organization. There's an age and experience gap out there. Let me tell you a story about this. Um, I'm also an adjunct instructor at a local university. And a course that I was brought in, not so much to teach, but to guide and mentor, involves a group of students who, over the course of the semester, act as a project team. And they have a live customer, and they they produce a project result for this customer at the end of the semester. If you have a chance, spend some time at the university level. What I learned from these teams um, were a number of things. First of all, they have successfully bridged the functional gap. These teams consisted of graphic designers, finance majors, accounting majors, developers, um, and in and, and, and productivity related disciplines all working together on one team here's what they were not thinking about they were not thinking about the difference between the need of the project and the technology to underpin the project they had overcome that gap this was a group of individuals 
that mirrors the kind of project teams that are successful out there in the real world. There was no difference on this team between the business and the technology, between the requesting and the delivering organization. The technology was built into what they were doing. The digital natives coming out of school right now, there are no boundaries between the performing organization, between the technology and the customers who are going to use that technology. Project Manager 2.0 can help organizations address a huge gap, a gap between the digital native who's grown up with technology that doesn't consider any boundaries between what they do in their day-to-day -day work and the technology that underpins it, and their more experienced counterparts. Project Manager 2.0 can help the organization bring those digital natives together with the experienced business people in the organization and produce superior results. Project Manager 2.0 is the aggregator, the team builder, helping us to grow from storming to norming to performing, not a go-between among separate silos. Now, this next topic here might be a tough one for some of us. Project Manager 2.0 is not large and in charge, is not driving the team. Project Manager 2.0 is a servant leader. Now, the concept of servant leadership is not new in the world. It, it wasn't created by the writers of the Agile Manifesto, like some of us might think. Right. Um, the servant, the concept of servant leadership has been around for decades. It's only been recently, though, with the advent of agile and DevOps, that the, the notion of someone acting in a servant leader role has come to the forefront out in business and industry. Look at this quote um, from the, the Agile Manifesto. Uh, we've come to value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working products, let's not even think about software, just working deliverables, working products over comprehensive documentation, collaboration over negotiation, responding quickly to change over following a plan. And in looking at this, as a project manager, the first time I saw this, Right, my heart started beating. Wait, wait, hold on. Are we, are we saying that documentation is no longer important, that we should throw tools and processes away, that planning isn't important? And the answer to that is, is no. There's a value in those things. But what's highlighted or bolded here, we value the items on the left more. You know what, we as project managers, we have to take responsibility for this. We have to take responsibility for this movement away from project management to the servant leader as being the preferred approach. We have to do some root cause analysis and ask the question, why? Why has project management gotten a bad name in the agile world? Have we been valuing plans more than people? Have we been valuing or focusing more on the comprehensive documentation over the successful delivery of a project? Can Project Manager 1.0 be a scrum master, be that servant leader? Probably not. Because Project Manager 1.0 is large and in charge driving the team. But Project Manager 2.0 can be a servant leader, must be a servant leader. Because Project Manager 2.0 is self-aware. Project Manager 2.0 recognizes that there have been some self-inflicted wounds. I have another story. As a project manager, mid-career, working for a large financial services organization, I joined an organization where there were some struggling projects. And I'll never forget being paired with a more experienced project manager, more experienced at the company anyway. And one of the things this project manager told me in all seriousness was, if you're going to be a successful project manager, then you won't have very many friends. And I remember being really surprised by that. Because I had always thought of a project manager as a leader, not as a, as a driver, a slave driver, but as a motivator, right? And I could see from that attitude exactly why when I attended Scrum Master Training that the instructor said, there is no role for a project manager on a Scrum team. 
that that struck terror into my heart. The discipline of project management and the skills of project managers are valuable, but we've gotten a bad rap. We can overcome that. Project Manager 2.0 can be self-aware and understand why the backlash can make the change and shift from a no prisoners mentality to a no casualties approach. We can't afford, Project Manager 2.0 can't afford, moving into the future to ignore, for example, movements like the hashtag no project movement. Has anybody seen this? Relatively new, I think, out there. Hashtag no, prog no project movement. Look at that out there on the web. Go out to Twitter. The hashtag no project movement says if you need to start a project, you've already failed. Right? Again, we as project managers have to take some ownership for this and ask ourselves the question, not what, we, not what have we done wrong, but what do we need to do differently in the future? Now, speaking of the future, change has never happened this fast. Anybody who's been working out there in the industry for more than a few years, and I've been working in project management for 20 plus years now, I've seen organizations do this very well. I've seen organizations do this poorly. I've helped build up project management offices, PMOs, and service management offices based on best practices in the PMBOK back before many people in the U.S. even knew who PMI and the PMBOK were. Our cycle times are getting shorter, and that is not going to stop. With every technological innovation, the ability to go faster increases. One of the, the kind of the new phenomenon out there is this concept of anti-fragility. Go out and do some work, do some research, become familiar with tools and techniques and the premise and principles of being anti-fragile. It might sound counterintuitive to the project manager who wants to make sure that we're not breaking things, that everything's working well, everything's working beautifully, that we're testing everything, we're fixing all the defects, and that we're eliminating all of those disruptions before we deliver. But the reality is in the fast-paced environment that we work in today, teams have to know how to fix things quickly because we cannot prevent more changes which inevitably are going to cause disruptions. Teams have to learn to break things in order to get good at fixing those same things. When is the best time to break something? Before it's in the hands of your customer. So we as project managers have to shift our attitude and encourage experimentation. Intentionally let our teams break things. Intentionally let them take the time and learn the skills to be prepared. Because once our the products of our projects are in the hands of the end users and our customers, they're not static. We're going to continue to change them. We're going to continue to evolve those products and those projects. As business and environments and technology change, we will have to keep touching them. Breakage is inevitable. And there are some positive results that come from intentional breakage. Consider Netflix and organizations that have learned, for example, um, from uh, the premise of controlled burns. We know now, firefighters have learned that what's happened in the past, where we our emphasis was on prevention, prevention, prevention of fires, created a situation where the natural burn was prevented and resulted in a situation where when we did have large fires, they became uncontrollable because there was so much fuel that wasn't consumed in the normal burn, the small burn, the controlled burn, that it created huge forest fires. Controlled burns promote learning and prevent forest fires. And we need to adopt an attitude to promote anti-fragility, 
to let our teams break things, support them in their efforts so that we can prevent, after our projects go live, those large failures. That's counterintuitive to a typical project manager 1.0's attitude. Now, this kind of an attitude, anti-fragility, breaking so we can learn from things, requires that project management 2.0 or project manager 2.0 is an expert at managing risk. Now, risk management techniques are not new in the world. Um, the PMBOK has a whole knowledge area devoted to risk management. Um, there's, there are disciplines, um, for example, um, MOR, management of risk. Um, anybody who's been a project manager for any length of time knows that there, there's a huge body of knowledge out there on how to identify, qualify, quantify, mitigate, and manage risk. But let's be honest with ourselves. Project Manager 1.0 was often checking off the box of risk management as just one more item on the plan. Yep, I did that. We got the team together. We identified the risk. We have a list. I have a risk register. I'm populating the risk register. I'm assigning a few people to um, maybe come up with a little bit of a risk management plan. I've checked that off my box. Project Manager 2.0 has to take a completely different perspective on risk management. If we're going to be, if our cycle times are shrinking, if we know that we're going to have to make sacrifices when it comes to, um, to documentation, um, even to testing and training, if we know that we need to promote anti-fragility, then Project Manager 2.0 has to become an expert at deciding which risks can we bear which risks must we mitigate and address? Which risks are going to create the biggest potential failures? Which risks can we accept, be prepared to deal with those because we've had practice? Project Manager 2.0's got flow. Now, what I mean by that is this. Anybody who's familiar with principles of DevOps understands the principles of flow, feedback, and continuous learning through experimentation. There's a lot that Project Manager 2.0 can learn, not necessarily from applying principles of DevOps and Agile principles and Lean principles, because let's face it, guys, we all know that not every project is a good candidate for an agile approach. The higher the risk, right, the more possibly controlled or traditional the approach. But whether you work in an environment where an agile approach is appropriate or not, there are principles that Project Manager 2.0 can learn from those approaches. Take this quote, for example, um, from DevOps. Just enough process to enable people to effectively communicate and collaborate. That doesn't mean that we're abandoning process. It means that we have to take an approach of understanding how much is enough. And the answer to that question isn't always the same project by project. Here's a real life example of an organization, several organizations that I've worked with, who have taken the approach to project management that mirrors the PMBOK, for example. Now, I'm not dissing the PMBOK. I'm a PMP. I love the PMBOK. But if you actually read the PMBOK, particularly those introductory chapters, what it says in the PMBOK is that this body of knowledge represents everything that you could do, but not necessarily everything that you will do on every project. For example, earned value management huge um, part of the PMBOK, but we all know out there in industry, there are relatively few projects where the technique of earned value measurement or management is used. And I've seen organizations stand up project management offices and project management disciplines where instead of taking a minimalist approach, they created a set of templates and documents and checklists 
that represented everything that you could or would do on the biggest, most complex, most complicated project. And the organization looked at this set of templates and methods and checklists and was overwhelmed. That's one of the things that I like about Prince2 is Prince2 didn't start with the biggest, most complex, most complicated set of methods and, and procedures. Instead, Prince2, if you look at it, actually started in the middle. If you look at the Prince2 method, it started in the middle. With an average project, you could take the techniques and the methods in Prince2 and look at it and see how quickly and easily you could take this medium size set of methods and scale it up, add to it, go look at the PMBOK for some tools and techniques to scale it for a larger project, or you could take the Prince2 method and quickly and easily scale it down to the minimum that you need for the smallest project. Don't start big. Ask the question, what do we want? What do we need? What can we not live without? When it comes to our project management methods, tools, and techniques. What I mean by that is this. Um, there are things that we want, things we need, and typically those are the two categories that we plug our requirements into. I'm asking you to consider a third category, things that we can't live without. For example, I want to um, I, I I want to have perfect 2020 vision. Um, there's there are some some surgeries out there um, that are very expensive um, that that could help me with my 2020 vision. I want it, but I can live without it. I need my glasses. You guys can't see me, but I'm wearing these glasses, and I need them. I need them a lot. I can't see these slides without them. But can I live without them? I can. I can't live without some of the basics like food, shelter, and clothing. We need to take that kind of approach when it comes to our project management methods and start small. What can I not live without? Build over time as we need them additional tools and techniques. Just enough process, build on it over time. Now, some of the principles of, De of DevOps and Agile, they're not new, but they've been newly packaged. If you haven't already, pick up the Phoenix Project. Um, read the DevOps Handbook. Again, the fact that, that you may or may not be a, a software development or technology company doesn't mean that you can't benefit from those principles. Um, so, for example, um, the Phoenix Project, um, which is very much about flow, feedback, continuous improvement, um, and Eli Goldratt's theory of constraints. It, it was based on the original publication, or looks an awful lot like the original publication of the goal back in, I think, 1984, is when theory of constraints was published. I remember reading that and being incredibly interested in that, but that's, that was back in the mid 80s. A lot of these principles that were exciting then we were not prepared for at that time. So the theory of constraints, which is new in DevOps, is now feasible in a world where automation has progressed to the point where a lot of the day-to-day, -day, more mundane tasks have been automated, and we can free people up to do things that only people can do. Project Manager 2.0, is using tools and using automation to do some of the more mundane, data-intensive tasks of project management, progress tracking, performance reporting, freeing up his or her time to do things that only people can do. Managing people well, being a servant leader, and serving the team. Project Manager 2.0 thinks big. Thinking big means that I've mastered the tools in the trade of project management. I have the PMBOK as a resource. I'm using Prince2 as a method. I understand what makes a quality management system as defined by ISO 21500. I'm borrowing big from disciplines such as, as IDLE and COBIT, 
in the service management space. I'm aware that everything that I do in my project has long-term impact. So I'm, I understand what's necessary to secure my project. I look to ISO 27001 to make sure that the product of my project will continue in the future. I'm accountable for my actions in a big way, and I know that I can't hide. I'm gonna start small, and what I mean by that is that I've thrown a lot of ideas at you, embracing new frameworks, methods, and standards, borrowing from other disciplines, you can't change the way that you're doing everything all in one fell swoop. Start small. Take one of these principles, one of these ideas. Don't shut your mind to the no project movement. Look instead, identify the root cause, adopt one practice from today, do the research on one discipline that you're introduced to today and build on that but don't wait too long to do it. Project Manager 2.0, Thinks Big, is going to start small, but is going to build on what he or she is learning and move fast. I appreciate your time and your attention today. Kelly's gonna to share a little bit with you about New Horizons, and then I will take questions. All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. And thanks again, everyone, for joining us today. If you guys have any questions, feel free to type those in now. We have uh, a few minutes to address those over audio. I also want to direct you guys to newhorizons.com for all of your uh, project management and IT training needs. We have a new uh, Center for Leadership and Development. So if you visit our website at newhorizons.com, just click on the Center for Leadership and Development and you will find all of your uh, project management courses and certifications under there as well. So uh, Lisa, we do have a couple questions. Uh, first question we have is, Agile seems to be taking over. Is there a future for project management? <laughs> I get that question a lot. Absolutely, there's a future for project management. But again, we can't afford to wait too long. I've worked with a lot of organizations lately um, who are abandoning their project management practices and jumping on the Agile bandwagon but the reality is that that not all projects are good candidates for agile um, and and we have to have people who who have the skill sets project manager 2.0 with the skill sets to help the organization make intelligent choices about which projects would benefit from agile approaches which projects are riskier and may be a better candidate for a different approach a more traditional approach and projects with both of those disciplines have to peacefully coexist in the same organization. Project managers are the people who are best suited to be the subject matter experts on both of those disciplines and provide wise guidance to the organization on how both of those disciplines can be used effectively and for the benefit of of um, project teams and customers um, in any industry. So uh, we can't afford to wait, um, become knowledgeable about those and be the subject matter expert for your organization. All right, and uh, let me see this real quick. Sorry, hold on one second. Okay, so this person's asking, does this mean less project planning? For example, having milestones uh, more active, less meetings. Um, this person's new to this area and they want to start uh, moving forward in the right way. Ah, okay. Um, so there are, there, are, there are a number of answers to that, all right? So this is where the, the, the concept of adopting practices and then adapting them as necessary. It doesn't necessarily mean fewer plans. Back and, uh, or less planning, okay? There are some quality management principles that are as valid today as they were back in the 50s or 60s when, when Dr. Deming, um, the father of quality, um, was, was making these live. And that's that we need to, if we invest in planning, then we will benefit in delivery, right? Um, I think where Project Manager 2.0 um, 
needs to improve his or her skill set is in being savvy. Um, so remember, we talked about risk management, right? Project Manager 2.0, instead of blindly following a checklist that says, do this, do this, do this, produce this document, instead, needs to take a more holistic approach, understand the required cycle time and nature of the project they're working on, and make an informed choice. Which, which planning initiatives, which artifacts, which activities can I afford the risk or bear the risk of spending less time on and which of those must I spend more time on? We, we need to make more intelligent choices and balance risk. Here's the thing, when you move faster, when cycle times are reduced, you are going to necessarily experience risk. So you have to be the expert at balancing choices. Where can I invest? Where is there lower risk of investing less time? Now, what I would say to you regarding meetings, is if you're having meetings to accomplish things that can be accomplished some other way through reports other than face-to-face -face interactions, I don't like to have status meetings. Status meetings are the kiss of death. Nobody likes status meetings. I know that might sound counterintuitive coming from a project manager. I love meetings. I hate status meetings. I like working sessions, right? Collaboration is an, a huge element of agile practices and of DevOps. As a, as a matter of fact, pure Scrum, if you look at the Scrum guide, at the details, and, and, and again, even if you don't work in IT, you should read the Scrum guide. Go out to scrum.org, go out to Scrum, Scrum Alliance, read the Scrum guide. You will learn so much from it. It, 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 it espouses this notion of taking a scrum team and putting them together, co-locating them in what I like to think of as a war room. Your meetings should be working, productive, decision-making sessions. If you're not meeting with someone to solve a problem and make a decision and take action in the meeting, then you don't need to meet. So I'm not saying fewer meetings. I'm saying more meetings that are not meetings, but are work. Collaborative sessions, make decisions, solve problems, take action, not after the meeting, in the meeting. All right, and would you recommend using a project planner tool? Always, absolutely. Here's the thing. So we live in an age of automation and over and over again with with the client organizations that i work with what i've been emphasizing to them lately is that they are going to be left behind you are going to be left behind if you have not structured your processes automated those processes so that you can free people up to do the things that only people can do people collaborate the tool the collaboration tool that's just an enabler right so organizations that have invested in enterprise project management tools that are integrated with other tool sets they are poised um, to automate those i don't want to they're not less value added they're valuable tasks collecting that data but they're poised to be able to take advantage of that automation if you have no tools in place if you're doing your project management manually then you are missing out on a huge opportunity to automate and collect that incredibly valuable data transform it into useful information and now what you're focused on instead of gathering that data is sharing that knowledge in those productive working sessions instead of spending your time gathering the data and now there's no time to talk about transferring knowledge and collaborating so absolutely i recommend tools enterprise tools all right and can an organization use agile methods oh wait i'm sorry you already answered that <laughs> um, how difficult would it be for a pmp to become prince 2 certified that's easy. Um, here's the beautiful thing about Prince2. Now, again, guys, I'm a PMP. 
and I'm a Prince II practitioner. I see the value in both. One without the other is, is incomplete. Um, anyone can become Prince II certified. Um, you know, the PMP, the project management professional, um, by definition, is someone who has already achieved, is it 4,500 hours of experience if you have a, um, a degree or 7,500 if you do not. That's an experienced project manager. The problem with that is that new project managers who are new to the project management space don't have the experience. They have a tendency because there are years from sitting for the PMP to not even pick up the PMBOK guide and read it, which is a huge mistake. But they they learn bad habits in those two, three, four years while they're preparing to sit for the PMP. They learn all kinds of bad habits. Anyone can take a Prince II Foundation class. Anyone can pick up managing successful projects with, print, with, with Prince II. Even your rookies, what I recommend to PMOs at, my, at, at organizations, is train everybody in Prince 2. That way your rookies, as well as your seasoned project managers, are all using the same method. Then along the way, your rookies can use the PMBOK guide to refine their project management skills, right? Now you've got everybody speaking the same language. Now, if you're already a PMP, then when you pick up managing successful projects with Prince 2, or you attend a class and you take that exam to be certified, right? An internationally recognized certification. Who doesn't want that on the resume? You will already, as a PMP, um, be way ahead of the game in grasping the usefulness of the method. You'll already know how to execute the method. The PMBOK prepares you to know how to use the tool that is the method of Prince 2. They fit together beautifully. Um, as a PMP, I remember when I sat a Prince 2 class and I opened up the book, I said, where have you been all my life? This, <laughs> my, my knight or my prince in shining armor. Um, because this was, this was the part that completed my skills as a project manager. Finally, I had a tool set I could use to apply all that project management knowledge. I didn't have to reinvent that wheel. So I, <laughs> have you figured out how strongly I encourage PMPs to go out and do that? You'll love it. Um, I, I don't want to say I don't want to say easy. Okay, but I'm going to. It's practical. You can do this. All right. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, I wanted to remind everyone that we will, uh, you will all receive a link to view today's session recording for anything you may have missed. So you'll get that email from me later today. In that email, I will also include some links to our website. We spoke a lot about, uh, Lisa spoke a lot to Prince too, and we do have the foundation and practitioner courses as well as boot camp available now on our website at newhorizons.com. So just visit newhorizons.com, click on the Center for Leadership and Development, and you'll find all of the project managers, management courses and certifications there. Um, and once again, happy International Project Management Day, everyone. And thank you, Lisa, so much for joining us today. Really appreciate your time. You are most welcome. It was my sincere pleasure. Please connect with me. Let's continue this conversation. Uh, we've got it started. Let's keep it going. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lisa. We definitely will. And thank you again, everyone, for attending. That will now conclude today's session. You may now log off.